In this lesson, we're going to learn how to find the greatest possible error when taking measurements. So you can see at the top, it says finding the greatest possible error is one half of that measuring unit. For example, the greatest possible error of 14.6 feet. Um, so if you take a look at this problem here, the six, the last digit, is in the tenths place, okay, which we write as 0 0.1. So what we do is 1 half times 0 0.1, and the greatest possible error would be 0 0.5. So let's take a look at some more examples of this, okay? So we're going to start by looking at the number in the last place, and the 7 is in the hundredth place, which we write 0 0.01. And so then we're going to multiply that by 1 half. So in your calculator, it's 0 0.01 times 0.5, because in the calculator, 1 half is 0.5. And so the greatest possible error is 0 0.005. Okay, taking a look at the next example, the 1 here is in the tenths place, which we write 0.1. And then we're going to multiply that by 1 half. So 0.1 times 0.5, and you get 0 0.05. So here's the answer here, here's the answer here. For the last example here, the 8 is in the thousandths place. So we write that point zero, zero, 0.001 and we're going to multiply that by one half. <clears throat> so in the calculator it's point zero, zero, 0.001 times point 0.5 which equals point zero, 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 0.0005. So that's the greatest possible error for that measurement. Okay, so in the next part here it asks if we notice a pattern. So if you notice up here, there's two numbers after the decimal point. Notice there's two zeros and then a five. In letter B, there's one number after the decimal point, And in the answer, there's one zero and then a five. Here, there's three numbers after the decimal point. So there's three zeros and then a five. Okay, so that's how, that's the pattern that we use. However many numbers after the decimal point there are, that's how many zeros there are and then you just put a 5 after it using this pattern. Okay, so if we use this shortcut, notice there's two numbers after the decimal point, so the greatest possible error is going to be point zero zero five. For this one, there's three numbers after the decimal point, so the greatest possible error is going to be point zero zero zero, three zeros, and then a 5. Here, there's one number after the decimal point, so it's going to be point zero and then a five. And in this one, there's three numbers after the decimal point. So it's going to be three numbers and then a five, or excuse me, three zeros and then a five. So that's the shortcut for how to find the greatest possible error. All right, so now, um, how do we find the percent of error? Okay, well, the formula you can see up here the formula for percent error is the greatest possible error divided by the actual measurement. So we're just going to find the greatest possible error like we just showed you, and that's your numerator. And you divide it by whatever the actual measurement was, and you're going to get a decimal. But then you have to change that decimal to a percent by moving the decimal two places to the right. So let's take a look at some examples. So first of all, we have three numbers after the decimal point. So it's going to, the greatest possible error is 0 .0005, and we're going to divide that by the actual measurement, which was 4.007. So in your calculator, you're going to do 0 .0005 divided by point, excuse me, 4.007. And when you do that, your calculator is going to look like this, 0 .00012, and it keeps going. So what we need to do then is move the decimal two places to the right to get the percentage. So our percentage is point zero, and then we're going to just keep two places after the decimal, so point zero one, because this two tells us to keep the one the same. So it's point zero one percent is the percent error. All right, let's do another one. So here, the greatest possible error is going to be 0 0.05 because there was one number after the decimal. So we put one zero and then a five. And we're going to divide that by the actual measurement. So 0 0.05 divided by 15.6.
gives us 0 0.00320, and then it keeps going. So now we need to change this to a percentage by moving this two places to the right. So our percentage is 0.32%. So it's 0.32% error. Okay, let's take a look at another one here. Um, I'm actually going to move down to the bottom here. Let's do this one. Well, actually, let's do number three. So um, the greatest possible error in this one, there are no numbers after the decimal point, so I'm not going to have any zeros for my, my greatest possible error. So it's just going to be 0.5 divided by 23. So if we do 0.5 divided by 23, the calculator says 0.02173. So if I move the decimal two places to the right, I get two, excuse me, yeah, 2.17% error. Okay, so let's do one more example. So down here, there's two numbers after the decimal point. So our greatest possible error is 0 0.005. We're going to divide that by the actual measurement, which is 6.57 pounds. So 0 0.005 divided by 6 point, 6.57, and the calculator says